Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today uh, working on our hydraulic press project. We're getting real close to having that thing knocked out. And one of the last things I need to do to it is get a winch to raise and lower the tables on it. There's a, a winch that was originally on the side. The one that came on it was just one of those old boat winches like you'd have on a boat trailer that had a cable on it. There's actually two cables that go up and over and just raise and lower the, the, the H table, the middle, middle center table that goes up and down on that. I really wanted something a little bit more substantial than a uh, boat winch and uh, was wanting also something that had a handle that was kind of off to the side rather, rather than being in line with the front of it just to make it a little bit easier to operate. And I was looking at all kinds of options and all of a sudden in my email comes an email from Mike White up in Missouri and lo and behold, he presented the perfect solution, at least I think it is. And he had actually used one of these winches on a, um, press that he did. So this is a little uh, cable or a strap winch. There's a handle that goes on the front of this. When you crank this, it has a um, worm gear in here that cranks things up and down. Doesn't even have to have a ratchet pulled in it. It's got enough tension on there that the handle's not gonna turn from the weight of the tables. Uh, so you can just adjust it and just drop the handle. What he did on his is he took the strap out, replaced them with cables, put them on the side of his, uh, his uh, press and worked like a charm. So we're gonna to try to do it. He actually bought a pair of these when he was doing his and had one left over and was kind enough to send it to me. So uh, this is a very well-built aluminum housing. I have no idea how much one of these things would have cost new. This is a used one, but uh, I'm sure it would have been substantial. Let's, uh, first off, I think I'll show you some pictures of one that Mike sent me uh, of his press and then we're gonna see if we can adapt this over to ours. So you can see the press that uh, Mike built or had retrofitted this to, might be a better way of saying it, but uh, he just has this mounted on the side. This is exactly what I want. Uh, he took a piece of PVC pipe and put in the center of this just to kind of give it a little bit larger diameter so it'd crank up and down faster. Got a cable running through it. Uh, on his, he's got one cable going up and over to the other side and one just going straight down. Mine's gonna have two cables that go out the top and there's another pulley on mine that goes back down. So basically they're both going up and then uh, pulleys will direct them back down uh, where necessary. But uh, anyway, exactly the same setup. This is what I want to get on mine. So um, let's go over here and tear this one apart and uh, see what we can do and see if we can get this thing installed. I'm going to start by taking the screws off the side here. I want to take a look in there. And as you can see, I've got my some help here helping me today uh, on this project. Ginger is, uh, has decided to join us up here. And uh, we're going to tear into this and hope that cat doesn't get in our way too bad. Mm. Just need a little bit of shock to break it loose. Yes, I see you over here. All right, you can see the worm gear in there. I just want to take a peek at that, see what was under that cover, but uh, I think I'm just going to cover that back up. There's nothing I can really get access to there for mounting it. If I want to take that wheel out, I'll have to pull that snap ring out. We, well, I'll tell you what, let's leave it off. We may have to do that to get this thing apart. Let's see. I guess Ginger wasn't getting enough attention, so he has uh, moved on. snap ring on this other side too. I don't know that I need to take them both out, but we're going to. All right, let's see if I can get this uh, centerpiece to come out. What I'm trying to do is get this strap off here. So I think I'm just gonna 
try undoing it by hand here and see if we can get it out without having to take it apart. It's not wanting to come apart easily. So um, we'll just try this. We'll get it. Well, I got the strap unwound, and now I see why it won't come apart. There's a pin <laughs> holding that in there. I should have thought of that because that drum is going to have to be pinned to that collar. So there you go. I wasn't thinking about that. Um, I'm not sure that I really have to get this thing completely out. Let me think about this, and uh, I can probably... Well, let's see if that pin pops out easily. Just take a punch here and a... yeah, it's going to come out pretty easily. Let me get a little bit larger punch. out easily now. Let's see. Or we could do it the easy way. I pulled the strap back. Now I can see how they mounted that. There's a couple of set screws in there. Let me pull that out. They had it folded back over on itself and I just didn't see it until I took a peek up underneath it. This ought to come right out. Look at there. All right. So we got that strap out. All right. I'm just trying to come up with a game plan here on how I want to go about doing this from this point forward. Um, I think I'm going to put the pin back in here. Let me roll that around where I can do that. Had this pin back in place and I'm thinking what I might do here is drill a through hole where those uh, screws are and run a cable. I need two cables coming up. So I'm thinking one cable going out, basically make a loop and have that just loop across there and uh, that way I'll have two cables coming out and that loop will basically serve as holding everything in place. That's kind of my idea. Um, I also need to figure out how I'm going to mount this thing over there on the, on the machine or on the, the press. So let me kind of figure that out real quick before I go too much farther. I need to get this uh, little roller piece up here out as well. It looks like there is a pin holding that in place. I go over to the press and see if I can press that out. Now I got this over here on the uh, Arbor Press. And we'll just use a little punch here. See if that'll come out. It should. Yeah. There we go. All right, got that out. <laughs> it's got that knurled end. If I'd gone the other way, it uh, I wouldn't have had to press that through. But again, can't really tell that until you do it. I will note that the hook that was on the bottom, I just went over to the bandsaw and I just cut that off. It was welded. The nut was welded on the inside. There wasn't a good way to get to it to grind it off or anything. So I just zipped it off with the bandsaw. Uh, what I want to do now, before I forget, I want to put these snap rings back on here uh, on both sides. So let me get those going real quick. Put this back in here. Let's see. There it goes. And I'll do the other side as well. There it is. 
this. All right, let's go see about mounting this thing. This plate right here is where the winch that was on here was mounted. Now that we can utilize this, so there's one mounting hole back here on the back. There's actually and there's room to put one on this flange down here. But what I'm thinking we're gonna do is uh, put a couple of bolts through this bottom frame. I'm gonna have to weld another piece of metal above this up here. The pulley in here kind of goes back, so I gotta have a recess in there, no problem at all. We got plenty of clearance back there, but we do need a piece up here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put two holes in the bottom that go through this, one hole in the top, and uh, that should mount it to the, to the frame pretty well, and that'll be at just the right height for me to crank on that as well. So let me uh, see if I can find a piece of metal to go across here, get that welded in place, and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing mounted. I've got this little piece of metal clamped in here. Uh, ground away a little bit of paint so I get a good clean weld. Got my ground hooked up on it. We're just gonna use the MIG welder and put that in place. That's right where it needs to be. Just gonna tack it on both sides first. All right, that should do it. Let me uh, let that cool down. I'm gonna repaint that real quick before we uh, put everything back on here. But that should do it. And I'm gonna grind those welds, make them look a little bit nicer. Not the greatest at welding straight up hill like that. But it'll hold. paint dry now and I want to mount this. I'm just trying to see where it need bolt needs to go so basically right there in the center. All right there. So let me go ahead and drill a hole through here. Now before I mount this I want to drill these holes for the where these screws were before. I'm gonna drill two holes all the way through this. I'm just going over the drill press, knock that off off camera. That'll just be for that cable to thread through there. And then I think we'll be ready to mount this. I still need to drill the two holes down the bottom, but uh, we'll put it in first and mark where those holes need to be and then uh, get those lined up. Now I've got my wire rope, my cable we're gonna be using to do this with. and. Uh, what I'm going to do is we'll just bring it through. I'm going to go ahead and bring both ends through and we'll pull it up tight. And we'll have to get the links adjusted like we want them. So this will go through like such and uh, it'll cross over in the middle. All right. So we're gonna come up the top here. And main thing I wanna do right now is just look and make sure that I've got my cables adjusted the right length. Let's see, this is on the inside. So it's gonna go over a pulley over here, It'll go to the other side and down over there. All right, I got plenty of cable at each end. In fact, I got too much cable at each end. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pull one side through back out to get my, or I just have to really cut one side off hopefully. That should give me plenty of length over there. And then we can pull this one through this side. like such. I've got the table all the way lower now. And what I wanna do is we're gonna bring this cable around 
this bottom uh, bar here in the back. I got a clamp, actually got two for each side, cable clamps here. So we'll uh, bring that together like such. And we'll just tighten this up. I've got another clamp. I'm just going to put one on there at the moment. I want to test everything out before I put it in there and we'll trim this uh, cable up as well. Let me get the other side done and we'll try this thing out. All right, we're going to give it a try. Look at there. That is working good. A little slow. The extra diameter on the inside might not have been a bad idea, but uh, it'll be fine like it is. And uh, the nice thing about this worm gear drive that I got over here is, look, you just stop, it holds the table up wherever you go, no problem at all. And then we can lower it right back down on those pins. And yeah, all is good. I like it. That's so much better than having to go back there to use the gantry crane to pick it up and down. All right, all I need to do now is uh, trim my cable up, put my other uh, clamps on. I think we'll have this job knocked out. And there we go. I think we've got our Lifting mechanism all working here. This is uh, this is sweet. It's going to work just great. And uh, with this little modification right here, I think that we pretty much got the press finished up and ready to use. Now there are a couple of things I've still got to do. I'll do it off camera. I'm still waiting on a couple of fittings to come in. I need to change this. There's a reducer bushing up here at the top. It's not rated for 10,000 PSI. Probably would never hurt anything, but better to be safe than sorry. So I do have a reducing bushing order to the proper pressure. We're gonna swap that out. The other thing that I'll note from the previous video where we did some of the plumbing work on this is uh, you guys, I had bought a gauge to go right here. This is uh, actually a 15,000 PSI gauge. It's overrated for what we need here. And we had some leaks. Well, I've got a separate hose with, that's gonna just go directly into the power pack where this gauge is on the back. Again, I'm waiting on a fitting to come in that I had to order for the 10,000 PSI to be able to put that in there, but we'll have a nice gauge right here on the front. Nice big gauge, it'll be easy to see and easy to read. Uh, and still gotta do that, but that's just changing some fittings out. So we'll do that probably off camera uh, when the time comes. Uh, I'll also mention uh, I had a viewer that sent down some one inch thick plates to put across here uh, to use to press on. Uh, he actually sent four of these. I got two on here right now. I'm gonna probably get some little half circles um, cut out on a plasma cutter, two different diameters, and that way I can uh, use these to kind of come up against something that I'm pressing. Uh, but just basically just to bridge across these and have plenty of surface area to work with. And like I said, there's two more. Uh, that he gave me that will fit beside these and I'll have a nice area here on the, the work area to press against. So that's gonna be a nice little uh, upgrade feature as well. And, uh, but with that, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and say this thing's done, it's ready to use. I've actually used it already a couple of times. Uh, you saw me use it in the last video. We've got the power pack over here, so it's completely automated, no hand pumping going on. 
Um, we can, should be able to theoretically, uh, no problem at all, reach our 10,000 PSI up here on this. This pump is rated for 10,000 PSI. The cylinder is rated for 10,000 PSI. All the plumbing is rated for 10,000 PSI. And at 10,000 PSI, 60 tons of pressure. That's what we've got. Uh, the only thing I've really still got left to do is I want to make some little uh, uh, bushing pieces that fit up on the end of the shaft here so that not, I'm not pressing directly on the shaft. I'll make some different diameters and different lengths. Uh, we'll probably do a little video on that at some point in time that uh, I can use a set screw and just attach to the ram and be able to have different lengths and whatever where I'm not having to use punches and pieces of metal that aren't firmly attached that can't come flying out and hurt someone. So, uh, but other than that, I think she's ready to roll. And uh, I'm real happy with this. Uh, I think this press is gonna serve my purpose as well. You know, it's not the biggest press ever made, but it's plenty big enough and it's really, you know, wide enough that I should be able to get most anything I'm gonna do in there. Of course, sometimes you run into length problems if you have a long shaft, you know, that's always an issue. But, you know, I can easily, depending on where it's at, I, I've got plenty of room in here to work. So I think in the most cases, this thing is going to do it. I probably will, I hope I never actually get to 60 tons on this press. I hope I don't ever have to press anything that requires that much force, but we got it if we need it. Uh, I think when we were pressing the first couple of pieces on this, took it up to 5,000 PSI just pressing against the table, which that would be about 30 tons. Um, and I think pressing the two parts out, we never got over about 15 tons uh, on the two press jobs that I've done on it so far. Guys, with that, that's a wrap. Appreciate the uh, winch down there on the end. That's the ideal, that, that is exactly what I had in mind for this thing and I was having trouble finding it. Man, having this community out here is awesome because I mean, literally I was on the internet searching when the email came in and he's like, hey, I got this, will this work? And I'm like, that's what I'm trying to find. So uh, perfect solution and I'm happy with that, very good. So guys, we're gonna sign off. We'll catch you on the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are greatly appreciated. They help uh, with the algorithms over on YouTube. Uh, please leave a comment, uh, hit that like button. That helps out a bunch. Um, big huge thank you to the supporters of the site who support on Patreon, PayPal, et cetera. It allows me to take the time to slow down and do the video and do the editing uh, it, where I can justify spending the time to do this. And, and it really makes a big difference. And I appreciate the guys that do help out on the financial front through those, uh, those sponsorships on either PayPal or Patreon. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. And uh, with that again, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.